Go ahead, Nelson. Sorry about the wait. No problem, bro. Could you hear me? Yes, sir. Very good. All right, bro. First of all, I came in late, but this is an excellent topic. Um, I, I seen the title and I had to come in. I got to tell you, you got the best show on YouTube, first of all. But all right, we got to get in. No, no problem. We got to get into it. First of all, for anybody talking down on Dahomey, then if you're a fan of the Haitian Revolution, just, just throw that out in the trash. There is no Haitian Revolution without the Dahomey, first of all. Next thing I want to say, the Dahomey started out getting punked by everybody. Like their story started out as a story of victimhood. They getting punked. They getting colonized. They becoming tributary states. They got to pay taxes to other African nations. They started out getting punked. Now people talk down on them because they decided to, instead of getting punked, they're going to go from being the prey and become the predator. So people judge them on the methods they took to go from a position of victimhood to a position of dominance in their region. Now, if they want to do that, that's fine, but they're looking at it through a modern lens, through the 21st century lens. You cannot judge our ancestors from the 1500s on what's going on today. They, they don't have no connection to that. Next thing I want to say, most of us, especially in the Caribbean, we are the, we are the descendants of the Dahomey. So anybody talking about they sold us into slavery and you know we got to talk down on them, they got sold into slavery. In fact, the Dahomey were, were one of the most dominant ethnic groups during the Haitian Revolution. So it was the Dahomey military science that defeated the French and the British and the Spanish. And another thing I want to say, unlike us today, you know, we can judge from, you know, our comfortable, you know, condos and our houses and our apartments and our air conditioned rooms. But the Dahomey, you know, when the Europeans came, they didn't lay down. You know what I mean? They didn't go protesting, get, get, get a pass from the precinct down the block and go, you know, hold up cardboard. Nah, they picked up arms and the women picked up arms as well. The women didn't surrender to the enemy when, they, when, when the Europeans came, they died on the battlefield as well, just like they died on the battlefield in Haiti. So if you want to judge the Dahomey, whoever's listening, who, who got something to say, then you got to throw away the Haitian Revolution, throw away uh, General Dessalines because he, he was raised by a Dahomey woman. You got to throw away General Christophe because his entire presidential security detail for himself and his wife was Dahomey warriors, men and women. And the reason why the Dahomey women had to pick up arms is because so many Dahomey men got sold into slavery. So that's why the women had to pick up arms and get it popping as well. So we, when we judge them, we have to, like you said, judge the full scope of everything. Now, I'm not going to stay on too long. I just had to, you know, show love to you, bro. Best show on YouTube. Excellent topic. You know, we, we got to hold the ancestors down, especially when we don't even got half the heart they do. You know what I mean? Most of us won't even smack a European. We're talking about ancestors that actually, you know what I mean, shot Europeans dead. But it is what it is, though. Bro, you know they, what I mean? yeah, the European right big mama and y'all talking about, oh, we allies. Let's go hold hands and lock arms and walk down the street singing. Like, bro, you they built different from you because right, they had right. to be like that at that time. They didn't have the option of progress through concession where you just keep giving and giving and giving up your rights and in hopes that some other group is going to equality and equity and oh <laughs> your safe space and all that shit you're soft and then you're right. trying to talk about them what would you have preferred them to do just get whooped up wasn't no uh he superheroes oh they should have fought against slaves yeah when they're surrounded on every side by slave raiding kingdoms they would have been overrun bro they got they had and black people can learn from the homie sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do so that you can survive and then thrive versus just constantly belly aching and complaining and waiting for somebody to be nice to you uh that's all you had nelson one one, one thing before i leave you know, a lot of people try to say that the Dahomey, you know, they were, you know, quote unquote puppets for the white man. But the white man couldn't operate on the coast without paying taxes to the Dahomey king. And for whatever reason, if the Dahomey king didn't like how the Europeans was moving, he raised them taxes at will because he had dominion over his kingdom. He had sovereignty and power and dignity and independence over his kingdom. You know, something that in the current day we don't enjoy. So I just want to say that. And, uh, bro, keep doing your thing. Best show on YouTube. Salute. Thank you, bro. Uh, we had empires. You know, these tribes are just the splinters of broken empire, shattered empires. That's what that's where these tribes came from. Most of these tribes were not just like, oh, it's a tribe and they just out in the bushes. These were empires that were shattered and, and splintered when the European came that survived now in our day as tribes. So we had empires. We had it going on. But there were bigger empires than the Dahomey. So the Dahomey had to do what they had to do to survive. 
But let me, my my brother, home team history. He could he could talk. He could uh, explain it better than me. And I'll just give like a little bit of commentary. But guys, we're wrong about what we're doing when it comes to the Dahomey and their history. Is wrong. It's wrong. You don't see white folks demonizing Rome. Who you think have more slaves? Who you think enslaved more people? Rome or Dahomey? Da, uh, Rome, fool. If you don't understand, uh, uh, think uh, the 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 um, Macedonians, Alexander the Great, or the Egyptians. Come on, these kingdoms lasted for thousands of years. They did all types of stuff that we could call atrocities. But when you're in the 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 game of like empire, when you're building empires, they're called empires for a reason, right? They're not built. They're not uh, republics. They're not democracies. Right. They're empires. They're built basically off the backs of whoever they're able to capture or enslave at the time. Show me one empire that wasn't built on slavery. that It didn't exist. And when it came to slaves, slaves were just like a commodity, like wheat or oil or, you know, anything. They didn't look at it like, oh, I'm doing something wrong. Right. I'm doing something uh, 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 innately wrong that God is looking down on me over they look like they were living in the world as they knew it. And in the world as they knew it at the time, slavery was something that was totally acceptable. Everybody was doing it. Now, the thing is, the, the Dahomey were themselves ruled over by a, a, a group, a kingdom called the Oyo, which was a Yoruba kingdom, right? And if you go read the history, which I did earlier today, the Oyo made the Dahomey give them tribute in the form of slaves. And so if the Dahomey didn't go out and get slaves, guess what? They were going to have to give their own people up as slaves in tribute to the Oyo, right? So it was like a bigger kingdom was like, yo, give you got to pay us. You got to give us slaves. And the Dahomey had a choice. Yo, either we're going to give up our own people as slaves, our daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, brothers, uncles, cousins, or we're going to go out and get some other people and just make them slaves, right? I, so, yeah. So, what did it say? If they didn't develop their military like they did, they would just be victims. So, what you got is a bunch of victims and, and, a group, and, some, and then there's people who will always stand up and say, we're not going to be the victims. We're going to start fighting back and doing whatever we got to do. And, and, and let me tell you something else, too. Like, people be like, yo, they were vicious. They, they didn't have to do what they did. Bro, do you realize that some of the very people that they was raiding against and stuff, these were even people who they had held as, who had been slavers of them in the past. So when you go up against somebody who used to punking you, what's going to happen? You're going to have to fight even harder. You're going to have to fight even more vicious. You know, when you go at that bully who's been taking your lunch money every day for five years and you decide, damn, I'm going to stand up, you're going to have to come hard because he's used to low dogging you. He's used to whooping your ass. So he's going to fight even harder when you try to stand up. So they had to go like twice as hard because they came from a place of being like, yo, these these like little dudes who, we used, who was getting punked on by the surrounding kingdoms. So you're going to have to be a little more vicious. When you don't got the strength, the numbers, you got to come back with piss and vinegar, bro. You got to make an example. We don't want to mess with them. They kill everybody. They cut everybody damn head, head off. They slaving your mom and everything. A lot of times when you see people do vicious things in history, it was really done as a deterrent. It was done as a deterrent, 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 right? Um, mass bay cannabis, smaller and minority tribes developed other skills like staying hidden, living deep in the bush, developing diplomacy, etc. Right, right, right. If you were small, you just had to learn how to stay out the way. Johnny Appleseed, again, yep, it was revenge. It was revenge. They would do a lot of stuff just to spite the oil. Like, look how y'all used to do us. Now look what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because at that point, they became competitors for the oil. Because the oil wanted them slaves too. So you guys just have to understand that these people had to fight other slave trading kingdoms as well as keeping themselves, you know, safe from people raiding them. 
So you pretty much was vigilant, had to be vigilant all the time and ready to just do what you had to do. You know what I'm saying? It, I find it ironic how we sit in America where we bomb in countries and schools and everything else every day, but we can sit up and try to pass judgment on an African kingdom that was out there doing what they had to do to survive. We killing people and blowing up schools over iPhones so we could keep making uh, laptops. They were doing it so their kids weren't taken into slavery. Shoot, I'll get savage on them too. Try to come for mine. I'm going to cut your balls off and hand them to your partner. Yeah, so we just got to stop, you know, trying to demonize. Our, you know, these are our kinfolk too. And the Dahomey, let me tell you the one thing. The Dahomey from Benin, they was the first to apologize for the slave trade. Out of all the countries, they were the first, first group to apologize for the role that they played in the transatlantic slave trade. Before Ghana, before Sierra Leone, before Guinea, before any of those places, they were the first ones to apologize for the, for the uh, role that they played. They didn't sit up and make a thousand excuses. Well, you got to understand the time. This was, it was a, di no, they said, look, we were wrong. We were wrong. And, and that's got to garner them some type of grace, some type of forgiveness, some of this uh, good, uh, let's put our differences to the side that we get a white folks who lynched us and hung us from trees and shit. <laughs> it, it kills me. We can forgive the people who hung us from trees, burned our bodies, raped our women, sold our children up the river. We could say right now today, hey, let's put our differences aside. Color don't matter. Race don't matter. But then when it's the, the homie, you like, no, what they did, I ain't watching that. You ain't going to watch that, but you sure as hell going to watch Real Housewives of Orange County. You'll absorb their content like it's nothing, despite our history with these with these people. But when it's our own, we we gotta just crap all over them. We gotta punch down them. We gotta make we gotta demonize them in the modern day. And you got people out here saying like, "Man, I used I'm ashamed. Like I used to be ashamed of my my history because I'm the homie. I'm from Benin. No black person should walk around ashamed." ashamed of their history that's how we got there everything they did was necessary for us to be here right now because if you didn't have them we probably would have got our asses whooped and and and, and the european would have really been running africa but what i'm saying about the dahomey is they wasn't no punk they might have did some stuff that wasn't cool but when it came down to getting down they made it happen when it came down to do, uh, get, to getting down, they did what they had to do. They knuckled up. Let's stop just looking at the negative aspect. Let's look at the positive aspect. Some black people on the continent ready to get down, ready to punch somebody in their face and defend because all we were ever given of Africa was weak images of weakness. All we were given of Africa was is images of weakness. All oh, you niggas wasn't shit. You were scared. You didn't know how to fight. You, you, you just rolled over for us over and over. Let's take what we can. Let's model the strength, the organization, right? The determination, the will to survive. Those are positives that you could take out the situation. You got black folks talking about, oh, I admire the founding fathers of America, a bunch of slave owners. But we could find some good to say about them, huh? A bunch of slave owners who raped black women and made a bunch of kids that they didn't want to claim. But boy, we get up and suck. So, oh, say, can we singing and shit? They got niggas. Boy, you would have never thought. You would never know it, looking at it today, that these people ever did anything bad to black people. But you know who we got a problem with? The Dahomey. <laughs>